and I pair three, two, one. You're on. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Close that out, Rich. Where is it? our it's the meeting got it? Okay, so we're in the there we go. beginning chapters of Mark. We're in Mark chapter three. Um, his his um, his availability to do healing and to do deliverance and to do compassion and to teach is being um, uh, exploited by those who want to do him harm. Jesus wants to do good and he does good and they want to do him harm. And here, here we have um, the, the Sabbath day and as is his custom, he goes to synagogue on the Sabbath. When he's in Jerusalem, he goes to the temple on Sabbath. His second raised ten great ten. That's in Jerusalem. So it's not uncommon in the city. In, in our culture, we might say that's so. Um, what is the setting for this? Is this he can go to synagogue, but I don't think so. He goes to the synagogue. He knew Jesus would do the healing up on a day that Jesus did the healing. position at this point uh being grieved by the hardness of their hearts they're not interested in the guy at all as pastor said he said to the man stretch out your hand and he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other and the pharisees went out there's nothing added here in the language but they had to be perplexed because after all he did nothing that resembles work That's and all right. of this if you look at this carefully he just told this man, stretch out your hand. That's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, but the Pharisees went out immediately and plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. Amen. So here we have Jesus in the previous chapter telling us that he is Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> right. And so they, right. this, this the guy with a withered hand, and we just, we can envision that 
that's a very descriptive word of something that's medically proven that you know that, that people have withered hands and uh without doing all the medical stuff it just tells us how that is so he looks he sees the trap he steps into the trap in a way that the guy gets healed the lord god almighty and jesus get the glory and the pharisees and Herodians are embarrassed by their lack of compassion. Mm -hmm. So it's like a triple play here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they they thought they had trapped Jesus with something that that they could that they could pin on him as as a, a death sentence uh, or at least a, a discrediting sentence. So 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 there's a synagogue now. They had to be, every synagogue had to have 10 families in it. So it's a pretty good size building, yeah. uh, 10 families to start. And then, so we got all these people there. It's Sabbath. It's time. It's time to honor God. And, and, and Jesus notices the man with the withered hand. Now, typically, the man with the withered hand would not try and be the center of anybody's attention. He would try and like sneak in and be in the be in the back corner or something because he's withered and he's um, and he's less than whole in in his mind. Mm -hmm. And Jesus sees him and calls him forward. Mm -hmm. So there's no work involved there. The the guy comes from the back corner. That's my understanding of where he would be. Comes forward um, a little a little intimidated because. Because he's got a withered hand. This is yeah. very public, um, but it's the Lord Jesus who calls him. And so he comes because the Lord Jesus calls him to stand in front of the people. And he said, is it good to do good on the Sabbath? Is it good to do evil on the Sabbath? Is it good? And, and, and they didn't answer him because their hearts were like, we don't care about this man. We just want to take you down. Mm. And... <laughs> And so his heart is grieved, and there's there's anger. We only see anger a few times in the scripture from the Lord Jesus, and it's righteous anger. It's not sinful anger, that their hearts are just so hard that they don't care about this guy at all. And in a local synagogue, it's it, it's a community event. So so everybody who's anybody shows up on the Sabbath to the synagogue because this is where they gather. In some cultures, um, they have we have church on Sunday, and then they have a cookout or something, or or food, and then they have um, a meal at night. So it's a whole day event, singing and praising God. And and in our uh, in our New England culture, the Pilgrims and Puritans sent their preachers off so they could do three hour sermons. If you couldn't do a three hour sermon, why hire you? You know. Mm -hmm. um, so the culture was built around the synagogue, and our culture used to be built around our church and some days it is so and his hand was restored and we've talked about the, the the multiple miracles that happen when you restore a hand first of all it's atrophied it's not used to motion secondly there's arteries and veins and electricity running through it that aren't that aren't used to it and, and thirdly it affects you all the way up and so when the hand it says simply your hand stretch out your hand he hadn't been able to stretch out his hand in forever. And so he stretches out his hand, and all these miracles happen simultaneously. And we have it recorded in one little sentence that his hand is restored as whole as the other. And then the Pharisees went out immediately and plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy it. Just a brief comment about that. The Pharisees hated being under Roman occupation. It, it really cramped their style. And the Herodians were had figured out how how to compromise just enough with the with the Roman government that they could get what they wanted without feeling like they had betrayed their their heritage. So these people were often at odds, but here they have a common enemy in the Lord Jesus, and they figure out together how they might kill them, how they might destroy them. Mm -hmm. I did all the talking. Okay, guys, yeah, tell me no, about verses one to six. Um, well, 
I mean, you, you until until we we read this this morning. Actually, I read this this morning, and I didn't get it out of it. But as you pointed out, he he committed nothing, and they couldn't even hold him to anything. And so they went out, and look, I didn't realize that they were enemies, but they they plotted. They wanted to kill this guy, yeah. and I was saying prior. Um, in the chapters that we read in the last couple of days, Jesus, you know, he's he's making some accusations and he's he's uh, making fools, intimidating them, and the stuff that he's saying. Um, even in this this thing here, where he stands up and calls the guy forward and and. And does nothing wrong, but heals them at the same time, and puts them uh, to quiet. Uh, he so, really does a number on them. So the only way this would have been work is if the guy came in in a mat and Jesus picks him up. That would have been work. That would have been illegal. But that's not what happens here. No, he just says, "Stretch out your hand." There's no, there's no Jewish work here. Sorry, yeah. but that's. But they had pages and pages of what defined work and what didn't. And there's nothing here. And it was restored as whole. Do you think um do, do you think at this point the, the Herodians and, and those people, do they think they heard that it was by the laying on of hands that the healings were happening? Because well, they, just, they were just hoping that they would do something that he could. That they could charge him right with. prior to this he laid on hands or yeah. the lady or lift, touching him, his... or lift up his hand yeah or something yeah or something but he he knows the law he, he was there when they wrote it yeah he was there when he wrote it yeah he okay. didn't he didn't do it. rich what are you thinking yeah, they, he's very very skillful here i mean they were trying to be uh, conniving and it, uh, literally backfired on them yes in that I uh, he even called them out. <laughs> Jesus achieved his purpose, but theirs fell apart. Uh, and nonetheless, they will plot on to destroy him. That, that, so they, they had that in mind. didn't matter what happened here. Um, they hope to gain some e evidence of actual work. Right. It's not here. Uh, and um, Jesus made his point. That mm -hmm. is it proper is the Sabbath proper to uh, do good deeds, uh, to do good and to save life well, versus what you guys have in mind with yeah. your laws. He almost prophesies to be yeah. to be evil and to kill. Uh kill, kill. it's an amazingly strong word, I think, here. This kind of they had it in their minds. Uh, that and the, would they be the you, you, could, how, you charge them with killing on the Sabbath? Yeah. That's a, that's quite a quite a statement. Right? I mean that that had to hit home pretty hard. Uh, as mad as they were <laughs> with Jesus when they came in, this certainly stoked the fires. But they kept silent. It was a fascinating. They didn't want yeah, to they, keep silent, but they knew that they had no they yeah. had no legal argument to answer the charge of. Is it good to do good or is it good to do evil? They wanted to um, step back and give him give him room to say something out of place. Yes. And not, uh, you know, when you're uh, if they're politicians, yeah. your yeah, enemy is politicians. digging a hole for himself. Just you know, stand back and sharpen his shovel. There you go. It just, you know, so gave him, they tried to give him space with that, I think, yeah. by let's, keeping silent. Let's try it in New Living, this whole Verses one through six. New Living Translation from the top. Mark 3, verse 1. Jesus went out into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with a deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned his critics and, and asked, does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil? <laughs> is this a day to save life or destroy it? <laughs> but they wouldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily 
and was deeply saddened by their hardened hearts. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. Now let's try it and amplify it. Amplified. Such a good tool. Bible, but we're working on a Bible hub. What a good tool it is. <laughs> okay, amplified. Mark 3, verse 1. Again, Jesus went into a synagogue, and a man was there whose hand was withered. The Pharisees were watching Jesus closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him in the Jewish high court. That's at a, a brackets by the uh, translators. Verse three, he said to the man whose hand, uh, the man whose hand was withered, get up and come forward. He asked them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill it? But they kept silent. After looking around at them with anger, grieved at the hardness and arrogance of their hearts, he told them, uh, told the man, hold out your hand. And he held it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out immediately, began conspiring with the Herodians to plot against him as to how they might fabricate some legal grounds to put him to death. Mm -hmm. So the implication of, at the end of the day, we've got Jesus honored and glorified. We've got a man whose hand works. We've got a whole synagogue of people who now their friend or their acquaintance anyway, has been healed and touched radically. And we have two, group, two Jewish groups huddling together to figure out how to kill him. So... <laughs> All kinds of ripple effects about this miraculous day and how 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 much they tried to control the situation. And again and again, we find that the Lord Jesus was in total control. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the power of your hand. We thank you for the power of your voice. We thank you that his voice makes a difference. We thank you for the resurrection and how that can save our souls and we ask oh god for your for your miraculous touch on those around us that are sick and for your miraculous touch on those who are so hating on you we would ask that they be saved sanctified filled with the holy ghost transform them oh lord transform me oh lord so i can make a difference and in, in a hurt world in christ's name amen 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 Thank you, Father, for this day, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for our pastors, Lord, for health upon them and for the leaders of our church, Lord, that we, you would protect them and guide them, Lord, that you would help me this day, Lord, that anybody that you would put in my path, I'd be able to share Christ with in spirit, in love, in word, and that I would have an influence today for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord, for your word, your spirit, and the instruction that you provided for us here. Uh, with the insights that are valuable to us today, we pray for your continued leading that we might live lives that glorify you. Yes. In Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Blessings to you all. Blessings. Are you? Let's see. Oops, come on. Oh, that's the ball, and I'm reading.